Hello and welcome to Internal Rate of Return with XIRR. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. This function calculates the internal rate of return, but let's just specify the exact dates for future cash flows. Stick around till exercise three, because I'll show you how this function is more accurate than the normal IRR function when you have irregular dates. Let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. First, let's just compare these two functions. Equals IRR. The values are here in C7 to C12. Close function and enter. Here we get 12 percent. And let's look at the x IRR function equals x IRR. Here we provide the values stored in E7 to E12, comma, and we also provide the dates. Those are stored here in F7 to F12. Close function and enter. And here we get 12 percent. But I do want to point something out. Let's say I increase the number of decimals displayed. You can see here that these are slightly different values. And the reason for that is their timing assumptions. This assumes perfectly even timing. However, this function uses actual dates, like based on a 365 day calendar. So that's why in practice, these values might be a bit different. So it's just something to be aware of. Now that we're warmed up, let's head to the next exercise, exercise two. So in a previous video, I talked about how to calculate the net present value using the X NPV function. And that function is related to the X IRR function. The X IRR function returns the rate of return where the NPV is zero. So let me demonstrate this. Equals X IRR. The values are here in B6 to B11. Comma, the dates are here, C6 to C11. Close function and enter. We have an internal rate of return here of 12%. And that's the rate that sets NPV to zero. Equals X NPV. The rate is here, C13, comma, the values are here, B6 to B11, and the dates are here, C6 to C11. Close function and enter. We see that the net present value is zero. In other words, the relationship is the internal rate of return is that rate that sets NPV equal to zero. In this illustration, these cash flows happen on the first day of every year. But what happens if those cash flows hit on different days or months of the year? Will it impact the rate of return? I don't know. Let's go to the next exercise, exercise three. Here we have the exact same cash flow values and the exact same cash flow years. And the only difference is when within the year do these cash flows hit? In other words, they're not all hitting on the first day. They're hitting in different months and different days. So given these irregular dates, Let's use XIRR to figure out the internal rate of return. Equals XIRR. The values are here, B6 to B11, comma, the dates are here, C6 to C11. Close function and enter. And now we get a rate of return of 9.6%. So as you can see, the actual timing makes a big difference in the internal rate of return. So that's how we can use this function to calculate the internal rate of return of a series of cash flows where we can include the initial investment and where we can use actual dates. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 